Hey everyone, Rod is on the move. A new update for the Nomad and the A5X. And the rumor is that we have a new device coming out next month. Anyway, let's jump into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's Ed. It is great to see all of you. I know I've been a little bit hit and miss, had a few things going on with the start of the semester in several schools, but we're getting close to the finish line on that. I've got syllabi written, course sites mostly designed, and new faculty orientation and everything already done. We are on the move. This video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the new and cool information coming out of RADA pertaining to the SuperNote. There's been an update to the A6X2 Nomad and the A5X, mostly bug fixes and a few uh, tweaks to some of the apps. But I think it's important to talk about what they're trying to do on the back end to make everything work. The bigger news, and it's a very small piece of news, is that they are also looking at releasing what they're calling the Mana Ray, which is the A5X2. Uh, and we'll look at what the website says about that for both of these things and kind of have a little bit of a discussion on that. But want to take some time to go through their website and go through their Reddit posts and maybe give a little bit of perspective. With that said, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what's going on with the SuperNote. So I've got several windows open here, but I want to make sure that I go through this. Most of the things that have been done here are going to be redundant, so we're not going to actually go through each of them in every single feature. One thing to notice right away is this idea that you have this note at the top on every single notification where they talk about upgrading their cloud infrastructure to enhance the experience. To continue using the cloud and partner apps, update your devices. This was a blanket update to the mobile apps, Mac OS, and Windows desktop apps. Here's the change log specifically for the Nomad. And one thing that it had that was different from the A5X was it was having a lot of trouble with the gestures on the sidebars. Now, personally, I didn't have that issue, but I know that it was an issue because Roderick at Rants About Tech uh, has talked about it. It was all over Reddit, and I don't think people were imagining things. I really believe it was an issue, and maybe it's because of the way I had mine set up and which gesture you had that was on the screen versus on the sidebar, or whether you were left or right-handed could have also if you were using those sidebars differently. But anyway, I'm glad they optimized it. I hope that it really did fix everything because I think that's important. Then you see this large list of fixes. And I think it was important for them to do this because there were several things from that last beta, and you've heard me talk about this before, they kind of rushed to get this update out a little bit, and it caused them to have some things that just needed to be taken care of. Uh, obviously, right here, they fixed the issue where there was sometimes a delay when First, writing a stroke after you wake up the device or switching applications. Also fixed an issue where the Note app would occasionally crash after opening a locked Note and restarting the device. Fixed an issue where the Note would sometimes get corrupted when continuously changing the PDF template. Now again, I want to caveat all of this. These are all real issues that I didn't have firsthand experience with, but again, I think it's important and it also shows you how much they're paying attention. Uh, fix the issue where the links at the bottom of the pages in the exported PDFs would not work. And I could definitely see that being important if you had MDO or MMP from My Deep Guide or the Get It Done Planner from Morning Coach. Fix the issue where the scrolling performance was not smooth in landscape mode. That was actually a real issue for me. Uh, when using the two fingers to scroll through a vertical note. It's one reason that I really have trouble using the A6X2. One is the size, and also even when you turn that orientation, it's really not the greatest of experiences. 
And I think that them taking that into the consideration and getting that fixed was really important. Fix the issue where the password protection was occasionally not effective when accessing a locked note through the last open note. This seems to be something that was yet another security issue they found when it came to being able to lock notes. I thought they had fixed this in the last update, but obviously not. Or this is a different issue, which is probably more likely. Uh, they also fixed the issue where the last open page was sometimes not saved successfully, causing the note to jump to the first page when opened. I, again, didn't encounter that, but obviously someone did. I think a lot of this may depend on how you use the device. For me, I use short notes, one-off notes, you know, single meeting notes, and I don't get these long notes that sometimes can have some of the other problems. The calendar fix the issue where the eraser would sometimes not respond when two fingers pressing the writing area in the monthly view and weekly view. This they fixed, but with a caveat. Uh, I've already sent and talked to the RADA team. The Supernote team, of course, is great, uh, but they kind of fixed this. So here's what happened. If you have your sidebar set to be the uh, region eraser, you will not be able to region erase on the calendar in any way, shape, or form. So what you have to do is you have to have a specific set. You have to have the region eraser set for the two finger swipe on the screen, which always works on the A5X because it doesn't have that second sidebar. And then you have to have the region select on the sidebar. And I don't really know how they're going to fix that. So I think a lot of people really like to have the erase, which is the functional that you use probably as often, if not more often, than you use the region select on that side, on, on that sidebar. I could be wrong about that, especially now that they have the delete option for the region select. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But right now, just so you know, you may be getting really frustrated if you're in the calendar or on the page or the month view. And if you hit the sidebar and circle, you get nothing but a continuous line and stroke. And if you put two fingers down on the screen and do that, you get a continuous stroke. The last two things, one was to do, they fixed the issue where moving tasks and deleting their original list while offline sometimes cause the tasks to be lost upon reconnecting to the internet. That is a serious issue. Again, I am playing more with the to-do list than I am using it as a daily driver at this point, uh, but I see a lot of future development with that. And then the stylus, it says fix the issue where the pin touches on the device were not registered after adjusting the non-contact writing values. So again, a long list of, I think, needed fixes. You'll see on the A5X, all of these same issues we covered with the A6X2. It's a shorter list because there are some hardware differences between the two devices, but for the most part, it's it's the same uh, same fix. And then we can move on over to the partner app uh, or the partner app discussion. So here's the mobile partner app. And you'll see here that one thing that they're saying again is that big note about the cloud infrastructure. And they're saying they optimized for efficiency and exporting notes to text, removed the restriction on entering emojis in task and list titles, which is kind of cool. Fix the issue where the internal links and exported PDFs would become invalid after applying the original PDF as a template for notes. So I think that's really good. And they fix the issue where Arabic letters, it shows you just how intentional they are and how much they're listening to, to feedback. One thing they didn't list on here, which was kind of surprising, is that they added back in the ability to upload to the app from your device. That was something that popped up in the Reddit comments a lot. 
and it was there and it was gone and then it was back again. You would think they would have put on here that now you can add files directly from your device into the app and then sync those up to your Supernote cloud. On Windows, and I'm going to cover just Windows here because it's the exact same information for the Mac, uh, but it's important to know that they improved those same features on all of these. So on August 14th, you got the cloud infrastructure update, you got an updated uh, partner app, you got an updated mobile app, and all of that pushed out at the same time, and you got fixes on the actual devices themselves. So to me, that means they were really intentional about not rolling this out until they thought they had covered everything that they needed to. That leads me to the last thing on this particular part. What's interesting here is, and this may be a missed opportunity for RADA, and, and I did mention it to them, and they, I, they haven't responded to this particular part yet, but I was really hoping when they said they upgraded their cloud infrastructure, they would have refreshed the app itself. And they did not. By app, I mean the Supernote cloud interface. This is still the cloud interface. It looks exactly the same. It's still clunky. It's still not in line with the device or with the partner apps. I don't know why it's not. And again, it may be because they're waiting for the A5X2, but not having the to-do list here is really troublesome. It's part of the infrastructure of what they're doing now. So you should be able to see your to-do list in this app. You should also be able to see the same interface. I, I just don't understand why you're not getting the same look and feel in the cloud that you are here in the app. I just don't understand. Everything is harder to do in the cloud. And I get that they need to sync between all of them, but it seems to me, and again, I'm not a programmer, but it seems to me it would be easier for them to have the interfaces match rather than have them being so different between uh, the way they look and feel. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. I think it's a miss, and I'm hoping that they fix it. They say it's in development, but they're prioritizing other things. I understand that they're a small company, but this is something that would really enhance the user experience, not just for me, but I think for a lot of people. Now let's just hop over and we'll talk about the other exciting right, news. So here we about. are on Reddit, and this is really probably, I, I may have buried the lead, so this may be uh, the most exciting news to come out recently. And it kind of launched a firestorm. Uh, of back and forth between me and other creators who are in this space, between myself and Rada, and asking them, hey, is this really a thing? It looks like, and you can see this is their updated table of what they have coming up. And this, on the same day that they released all of these updates, they also kind of quietly put in that they changed time to market for the A5X2 from quarter three to September. And if you're following along, we're less than 20 days from September 1st. Now, I don't expect that they'll roll it out on September 1st, but it means they're not only going to hit that quarter three target, but that they may be able to hit it in the first part of September and start really pushing this product out. That's my hope. I think that's why they pushed out all these updates, all these upgrades, all these enhancements. I think they're trying to ramp up and preemptively prepare for what they hope, and I kind of agree and think, is going to be a surge in demand for these devices. The success of the A6X2 kind of caught them by surprise. Uh, they had trouble filling demand. I really think at this point they're trying to ramp up quickly to be able to fill demand right away once this thing launches. Now, that's just me having conjecture. Uh, but 
they did say that this is definitely going to be there. Uh, you'll notice too that the A4 X2 uh, is still showing quarter four. Now, what would be really interesting there would be if they were managing to get this out by September for the A5 X2, and then in November or December, drop the A4 X2. I think you would really see them hit the market hard uh, with all of the new things coming out, all of the new devices. I think this is a smart strategy by them to try to get both of these devices out within this calendar year. I just, I, I see that as a win for Supernote because there are so many players in this space. There are so many things happening. I think it's important for them to, to get this out there. And there were some other comments on Reddit as well, where somebody said, is this really true? And the chief chat officer, uh, Hex, said it absolutely is. I'm excited about this. I think everybody is. Uh, we've been talking about it for a long time. There's been the delays. And I think we are finally about to get there. We're finally about to hit it. And once it happens, I think it's going to be just a game changer in the space. Again, I'm not being sponsored by RADA. I'm not being you know, asked to say any of these things. I'm just very excited about the product. And it'll be really cool to see what they have to say. All right, everybody, welcome back. Thanks for hanging in with me. This has been really fun. I did want to make sure that I got this video out. I think it's important for us to be able to talk about the possibilities. It was really interesting that RADA does what they normally do, which is, you know, kind of, you know, throw a bunch of information out at once. And the update not a huge update, but an important one in that it helped fix some of the things that were, uh, I think, kind of rushed earlier in the year when it came to the desktop and mobile and to-do experiences. So it was very important for them to do that. And then to combine that with this announcement that they were moving up the date, not really moving up, it's still quarter three, but giving a definitive date rather than just saying sometime this quarter. They're saying in September, early September, they plan to have the A5X2 in mass production. That's an important thing for them to be talking about right now, especially with the competition that's out there. So anyway, give me your thoughts. Tell me your impressions. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Please hit that like button, that subscribe button. And until next time, have a good one.